Yappers, we finally have merch that is coming out towards the end of the month. I worked in-house with an incredible company and we printed them all on Gildan Tees so they will last you a very long time. This is because pretty much all of my band tees are printed on Gildan Tees and I've had some up to seven years, okay? There will be more information over the coming days. I have tried to make this shirt as cheap as possible possible for you guys, okay? Because it makes no sense to overprice YouTube merch. What is it, Gucci? No, it's just like buying a regular band tee, bro. Trauma dumping is one of the most overused and misused terms on TikTok to date. It literally has people inadvertently re-stigmatizing opening up about one's mental health. For example, trauma dumping is not venting, nor is it whenever someone somebody just needs a friend to hear him out. This term exclusively applies to those who takes advantage of healed people, of empaths, unloading all of their trauma onto them, but has absolutely no desire to try and make their situations better. Because you see, the trauma dumping person wants to continue trauma dumping. They then leave said person in the dust after trauma dumping. And on top of that, dumping trauma onto somebody with no intentions of being reciprocal to having that person's trauma dumped onto them. Did I make that easy enough to understand? Because I swear TikTok takes a word and then completely tries to redefine the word. Some people have confused this term with whenever their friend is trying to say like, hey dude, I'm not doing too well and I'd love to have somebody to talk to. So I lied. Put your clothes back on. We're going to be talking about about how social media, TikTok in particular, has rebranded opening up about mental health issues and normal daily happenings to trauma dumping. Completely, if I haven't already said it enough, ignoring the true definition of the term. To be quite honest, Yappers, the popularization of therapy speak has done so much damage. <laughs> when you're talking to someone for the first time and they just start trauma dumping. See, this is something that happens to me quite frequently whenever I'm to meet new people. For example, just recently, because I'm in a rental, my yearly inspection was up. So I had some random real estate agent come and tour my house to see if there was anything wrong to report back to the real estate agency if, you know, anything was wrong. If I was hiding something sus or maybe I put holes in the walls that I didn't tell anyone about. When I tell you guys, I think that I create too much of a safe space for people to the point where they're so comfortable in telling me about their trauma from like 20 years ago. Mind you, a random real estate agent that I've never met before in my entire life is just all of a sudden dropping all of this lore about themselves. And then it occurred to me in that moment, okay, I really enjoy the fact that people feel so comfortable with me to the point that they open up about their life's events. That's exactly what I want with human interaction, genuinely. I absolutely love the fact that I create enough of a safe space for people that I cross paths with that they will just share this kind of stuff with me. Is it trauma dumping? In my opinion, no. Is it just a human trying to relate to another human on a human basis? Yeah, I don't know about you, but I would rather that so much more than small talk as I am so shit at trying to break ice. It is it is actually embarrassing. I could not be good at small talk if my life depended on it. Ah uh, yeah, the weather has certainly been weathering. I'm gagged. No. Tell me why you connect with your favorite song so much. What got you to that point? If you're talking to somebody for the first time and they start quote unquote trauma dumping on you, instead of posting it to TikTok as this sort of negative thing, maybe just tell that person politely that you cannot handle that level of information at the minute. But what would even be defined as trauma dumping here? Is it somebody who's breaking the ice by telling you a little bit about themselves, or maybe somebody trying to use you as their free therapist. I'm willing to put my bets on the latter. Someone in the comments had asked what trauma dumping is, and the response is so funny to me because it's like, dude, 
y'all really do not know what you're talking about. When you just meet someone and they tell you about their essay or a parent for no reason and then you're frozen in silence listening and don't want to. No, that is not what trauma dumping is whatsoever. And it's like, I can somewhat understand where this person is coming from, right? Because it's like, who really wants to be sat there listening to terrible things that has happened to somebody? For me, it's not because I'm like, Oh my God, you got essayed? Really? That That's a bummer. No, I'm thinking, oh my God, I wish I could literally just grab this by his face and... Trauma dumping isn't opening up to somebody about two very real life experiences that unfortunately happens to people every single day around the world. It literally just boils down to whenever people are trying to farm sympathy out of either their really close friends or random people, but are not willing to do the same back. Hence the term trauma dumping. Okay, so you're dumping all of this information onto me. Now, what are we supposed to do with it here? How come the only time you ever want to speak to me is when something bad is happening in your life? And I hear people all the time say like, well, my life is constantly bad. So it's not me trauma dumping. It's like, my life is constantly bad. No, 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 no. That is not what I'm saying whatsoever. Cause it's like, I'm so sorry that you don't want to hear about your friend's struggles at the minute because you want them to be a happy-go-lucky SpongeBob-esque character, but that's not real life. People go through things and are allowed to open up about it. If you're in a place where you don't want to listen to it, which is valid, maybe, I don't know, just express that. Oh, but drama queen, I really don't want to hurt this person's feelings. Unfortunately, yeah, their feelings are going to be a little hurt for a couple of minutes, but but now you two know where you stand. Because obviously, sometimes you need to read the room and be like, is this an appropriate time for me to drop all of this lore on you right now? For some people, like myself, it is. I always have that door open because if I wasn't yapping, I would want to be someone's therapist. I do that because I've learned if they know all my past trauma right away, I don't have to go months before they see that it's a lot. They know right now from the start, saving my heart. This is also so valid because because so many people do this and unfortunately traumatized people think in a traumatized way. Okay, what if I don't tell this person about what happened to me a couple of years ago that has caused me to act a certain way and now they're wondering why am I acting this certain way and then I tell them and then they abandon me and leave. It's up to the person to deal with their abandonment issues but at the same time it's like can we just be empathetic human beings again? I just cannot believe the vast amount of TikToks I come across of people being like, mm, stop trauma dumping on me. And it's literally just their friend saying, hey, I'm going through a tough time right now. That my friends is not trauma dumping. I don't think most of these people who use the term trauma dumping have actually been trauma dumped on. Sometimes it's just easier to sit someone down and be like, hey, so here's a little bit of my law and why I am the way I am at the moment. If this is something that you just genuinely cannot handle, that is fine by me, but I need to kind of like know right now. Here's a little bit of my law that I'll drop real quick. Sometimes I don't respond to people's messages for a couple of days and it's not because I'm depressed or I'm upset or anything. It's genuinely just because I feel overwhelmed by life. And sometimes I don't know what to say to the simplest of texts. Like a friend will ask to hang out and I'll be like, I probably can't respond to this straight away because I'm just gonna say no. Sometimes it's just easier for people to open up Pandora's box. Now, rather than finding out that information later and having it affect the friendship negatively. Y'all literally need to stop trauma dumping on people. I'm so tired of it. Like I'm so tired of meeting literal strangers and just trying to have get through a basic interaction and then getting trauma dumped on everything that's happening in their life. See, the popularization of certain therapy talk terms, such as trauma dumping, has done so much damage. It has given people excuses to be sh 
be friends. Hot take guys, but I don't really want to be somebody's friend if they're not willing to be down with me sometimes. Crazy concept, but people aren't always happy. And if that is something that you only want out of people, it can't be out of me. Trauma dumping doesn't pertain to people talking about what's happening in their life at the minute. And the amount of privilege you have to have to have this take is wild to me because it's like, I am so sorry that that you cannot take a second out of your day to listen to somebody else's day, regardless if it's positive or negative. If you're only wanting to be there for somebody exclusively in their positive moments, hot take, hot take, hot take, you're not a good friend. I mean, why would you want somebody in your life who is only willing to be there for you when things are taking a positive route in your life? Because it's not real life. Now, I understand when you're going through stuff, sometimes you just got to spill to the person that's closest to you and you know what i've been that person i've done that i know how that feels and like it's a tough space to be in like we're supportive of your struggle you are perfectly valid however the rest of y'all who make it a habit who like pull this stuff out like it's a party trick leave it at home okay look for a second she had me there and i'm glad that she clarified and was like look i've been there done that because there is some sort of truth that is being spoken of here right i have known people who have just dropped their trauma in front of everybody at a completely inappropriate time. Like announcing that you're getting engaged to somebody and then you have a friend in the back like, oh, um, I can't get engaged ever because my ex wanted to get engaged and he essayed me. Like, oh, okay, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there, Tiger. Like I completely understand why you would feel that way. But here and right now is probably not the time to express that because those kind of situations have a lot to unpack there. It's not something that you just shrug off. And me personally, I don't just shrug off that kind of information. We need to talk about that. So in this case, I can understand where this TikToker is coming from. I'm begging you, leave it at home. And if you're the kind of person who you're like, I can't leave it at home. Like I'm always thinking about it. Don't come out. No, 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 no. You've just lost me again, babe. One should not isolate themselves from the world because they're essentially a quote unquote burden to people. Are you serious? For a great portion of my my life, I isolated myself entirely from the world and it did me absolutely no good. It did so much harm to my mental health to the point where I was on the brink of agoraphobia and that in of itself was super scary because before the lockdowns, I was getting myself back on track with like going out again and trying to live a normal life as I should be doing as a teenager. And then boom, lockdown hit and I was back to square one. And that was very scary because now it's taking me even longer to recover from stuff. I struggled and suffered in silence because of people like this. I didn't want to be a burden on people, but at the same time, what exactly? Exactly. Did you want me to talk about? Did you want me to talk about everything good that's happening in my life? Because nothing good was happening then. And I'm the kind of person where it's like, if I'm feeling some type of way, I want to take myself out of the equation because I don't want to bring other people down like the way I'm feeling. And when I opened up to my friends and my family about this, they were so upset with me. Like, we would not have let you suffered in silence had we known what happened to you. They shouldn't have to keep the themselves at home just so that you feel comfortable. Like I've really come to notice just how unempathetic people are becoming. And I don't know when this rapid rise is going to slow the fuck down for good. It's all mental health matters. But at the end of the day, those statements are so performative because if you really cared about people, you wouldn't be using this term in this fashion. Most of these people on TikTok who are using the term trauma dumping don't even know what it mean. There is a time and place for everything, everything, literally everything. And I want you to also understand it's not just about you. This isn't just about you. This isn't the you show. If I am hosting an event and I were put in a lot of work and time into it, I will not have it ruined when my guest spirits are weighed down because you can't stop talking about your sixth grade girlfriend. Are you serious? That's funny as hell, bro. He's still thinking about a kid? 
I mean, you can really turn it back around on him like that. Like, oh, dude, you still think about her? That was from sixth grade. That's kind of gross. But no, once again, completely misusing the term that doesn't apply to the situation at hand at all. An annoying person ragging on about their sixth grade girlfriend at 26 years old isn't trauma dumping. And I get it. Everyone is going through something. Like, everyone's going through and grappling with something difficult and they need community and they need people to like stand by them and hold their hand like I understand. Does it have to be in front of my salad though? Like, of course, I'm gonna be there for my friends. You know, like if we're having a conversation, all of a sudden, like it takes a turn for like what's going on in your life. Hey, sometimes it is like that. But what we're not gonna do is do it to a bunch of strangers we don't know. The problem here is that people expect other people to act and be like perfect little AI robots. If it's genuinely something you don't want around you and your strangers, maybe don't invite that person if you know them to be trauma dumpy, quote unquote. But keep in mind, humans will stumble and they will fall. They'll accidentally open up about themselves in front of people who don't want to hear about it. But it's on y'all to express that. If you want to expect something from other people, I mean, shouldn't that be expected of you to say something about it? I used to be friends with this guy who would uh, describe his sex life very graphically to me. Um, he would do it while we were out in public and like we were friends uh, discussing it and I'm, you're wondering, how can we be friends? Well, it's because he's gay, okay? So he would discuss uh, his escapades out loud and in quite detailed manner to me and like personally I don't care because that's my friend but he would do it out in public like at the dinner table the waiter just gave us our food and he's talking about how attractive he finds the waiter you know that's not appropriate <laughs> okay look I get it. Some people are just not comfortable in hearing others opening up about their intimate lives. Could be various reasons. Maybe they're just genuinely not comfortable with it. Like, hey dude, I do not care what you've done with your bum today. Can we please just eat our burgers and watch Vanderpump Rules? Okay. <laughs> As it's like, of course, not everybody is comfortable with the conversation and topic of but it just gets annoying when y'all don't say anything about it because how is your friend supposed to know that you are not comfortable with that topic of conversation? Because I can guarantee you when you tell people, hey, I don't like this conversation, they will stop. That's most sane people anyways. But again, it's not trauma dumping because there doesn't seem to be any trauma here. It's just the topic of you're just simply not comfortable with the nature of the conversation and that's fine but you need to talk about it but hold on is bro not allowed to find the waiter attractive uh i just feel like that was a weird point to add on but see how this term is being applied to situations and relationships where it just doesn't belong i'm sorry but i'm not going to sit here and shame somebody for coming to me with information that they are not necessarily comfortable with sharing with others maybe it's a matter of people only trusting you with certain bits of information that they know that you wouldn't judge them for. This is why it's such a nuanced topic that has been pushed into a black and white narrative. Okay, drama queen, what is the actual meaning? Show us. Trauma dumping is the act of telling another person or other people in a detailed way about problems and emotional pain that you have experienced, expecting them to give you sympathy and comfort when they may not be willing to do this. The oversharing of painful emotions and thoughts has been termed trauma dumping. And unfortunately, I see this as kind of a response to the mental health system being overwhelmed on a constant basis. Because you have people who need therapy and they need psychology and all that kind of stuff. But what about the mental health professionals? They need that attention too. So we're constantly in this vicious cycle of people needing help. But on top of people needing help, the mental health system is just not supported that way. And let's talk about that candy salad trauma dump trend for a moment that for some people got them millions of likes. It's because when it's funny and when you are making something quote unquote positive out of trauma, people are willing to listen. They're willing to hear you out and also laugh at it too. But when it's turned into this hee hee ha ha lamau lol trend, everybody is just fine with it, including participating in it themselves too. I just can't stand these performative asses, man. You know what? Sucks to be you, dude. <laughs> 
as I said before, this is a very nuanced conversation as it is genuinely inappropriate to just drop on me all of a sudden that your dad hit you over the head when we were just talking about WWE. Look, that is completely and utterly a terrible thing that happened to you and I'm not undermining it and I'm not trying to be rude, but I don't know what to say because we were just talking about how this past weekend's match with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley really didn't cut it. We love mommy over here, chat. Okay, we, we, we love her. Or have you guys ever had a situation arise before where you're having a healthy discussion or a debate with a friend or really anybody for that matter of fact, but then somebody will bring up something like they've been essayed out of nowhere and it doesn't relate to the topic whatsoever. That person just for some reason wanted to put it in there. And you're like, what does this have to do with the topic at hand here? Again, I am so sorry that happened to you. And that is such an awful thing. Can we talk about it later if you're comfortable enough? But you kind of need to read the room and understand maybe not everybody is emotionally available for that kind of information. Because it's a lot different when it's just one on one kind of interaction. And then it's a lot different when somebody just whips that out in front of a group of people. Like, I really want to help you, babe. But right now probably isn't the time and it's a little bit inappropriate. It even could be as innocent as you saying that your favorite movie of all time is 10 Things I Hate About You. And then all of a sudden you're getting a full on lecture as to why you should not like 10 things I hate about you whatsoever because your friend's mum was abusive and that was her favorite movie. Like, What's that got to do with me? I didn't do what your mom did. I am not her, clearly. That's just my favorite movie. Now you're making me feel really bad about it. And I don't want to feel bad about my favorite movie. Stop trauma dumping onto your friends. They cannot help you with your problems. They are not therapists. It is so crazy to me how accessible people think therapy is. Look, I have only just been able to secure an appointment outside side of the public health system because I am finally in a position where I can afford one for the time being at least. And let me tell you, I am so anxious. I am so afraid to do this as I remember saying in a video sometime earlier this year that I was not comfortable with something like that yet. It is genuinely a fear of mine that I need to get over because there is a lot up here that needs to be dealt with. And if I leave it to go on any any longer and if I let it fester, there could potentially be a larger problem in the future. I was on antidepressants for a couple of years and I've been off of them for a year now. I don't ever want to get back on them. So in order to achieve that goal, I must put the effort in. I must make a change. So it's like, it's not only about getting past the money factor to see a therapist, but also the fear factor. That's why it's like, you know how much pride people got to swallow just to go to therapy in the first place? Do you know how many people don't even believe in therapy to begin with. Like if I really get that sad, I'll just talk to a friend about it. Babe, there are some things you don't even want to tell your friends, okay? Sometimes talking to a complete stranger just makes sense. All because TikTok said, don't worry guys, you don't need to be present friends anymore because they're just trauma dumping. They're bad people. No, they're just venting about their day. It's not trauma dumping and using therapy talk where it doesn't apply is so just angering because if only you knew what you were talking about, you'd feel kind of shitty using that term against your friends, your own friends, dude. And yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we are in an age of apathy and no empathy for people whatsoever. Yes, peeps, your friends are meant to be there with you through your highs and lows. If they are only wanting to experience the best version possible of you, it's not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but it's completely and utterly unrealistic. You don't have to be a qualified therapist in order to be a good friend. As it's like the tweet that I'm about to end this video off with should not have even been a hot take to begin with. Hot take or unpopular opinion, I guess. If I can't vent to you as a friend, we cannot be friends. You don't need to be a therapist in order to hear me out. If you're bothered by my trauma, I simply want nothing to do with you, especially when I'm actively dealing with my issues. Yeah, valid. It's not like you're expected to deal with somebody's trauma every single other day, but how do people think real life friendship works? Trials and tribulations, my guy. W what do you think this is? Do you think this is Sims? The drama queen, people have their own issues and their own traumas too. 
No way! No way! It's probably why if you are not coping well with your mental health, you should probably disclose that to your friends. It's as simple as saying, hey, I cannot mentally handle this at this point because I am going through a lot right now. Yeah, sure. I am so sorry to hear that. If you want to talk about it, let's talk. I don't really feel like talking about it right now, but thank you so much for the offer. There is how it could go. But no, people have to make everything so overcomplicated and so difficult. No wonder why people struggle with friendships and relationships all the time on social media. So with all of that being said, everybody, what are your thoughts and opinions on the term trauma dumping? Have have you been somebody who has unfortunately been trauma dumped on and then just never thought about again? Have you confused trauma dumping with venting? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me once again today in Yappersville. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your residency with the utmost care. Whoa. <coughs> 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 Take care of yourselves and most of all, love your f selves. You're valid! You're valid! You are valid!